I feel like most hygienists have been told that there is no growth in hygiene. To be completely honest, I feel like I hear that a lot. So to be able to have hygienists come up to us and are looking for growth is really exciting. You need to recognize your fears and sit with it because the fear doesn't necessarily go away, right? It's still going to be there, but it's learning how to handle it and then grow from it and lean into it because that's when you'll get the biggest amount of growth. You know, working in an office, if the doctor isn't willing to buy the tools or whatever it may be that you need to have a successful day, sometimes it's hard, but taking the money and investing it back into yourself is, you know, investing in your career. And that's all a, a journey. Yeah, this is a tale. A tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one bringing the best of dental knowledge. And we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening and preventing gum disease. We're going to do a lot of learning and have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. A tale of two hygienists. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists podcast, an Endeavor business media production. This is episode number 364, and I am your host, Andrew Johnston. And happy new year, everyone. Happy 2023. You know, it's kind of weird because I feel like my short 39 years of existence, I've had every emotion around New Year's, right? So you have your, oh, I'm going to make it the best new year ever. I've had the, I don't really care what's happening. Um, And I feel like over the last several years, I was the guy that was really proud to go to bed before his teenage kids. But this year, this year was different. So we had our in-laws in from Washington State, and my father-in-law, he loves watching football. Anytime I would go over to his place, there's always football on. Anytime that he comes over to our place, I try and have football on. I love college football, um, but not nearly to the same extent as he does. Anyway, so on this particular Saturday of New Year's Eve day, it was the best college football ever to be watched in the history of the world. And I will absolutely spare you all the details. Um, But if you are curious, I will put the link in the show notes of a minute by minute thriller recap. And you'll also notice if you do go look at that, that the last play ended at 12.01 a.m. Eastern time. So as we were ringing in the new year, the very end of this thrilling game also concluded. So I accidentally stayed up, I think, later than I normally would have, but it's because of football. Um, The kids came down. We did a toast. And then I was right in bed. I was probably in bed and asleep. Probably a good 1225. I didn't even hear all of the neighborhood fireworks that were going off. I was just, I was out. So that's that. One interesting thing, I mean, is interesting for me is I didn't really set any New Year's resolutions this year. And I'm not really like, I'm not too cool to do New Year's resolutions. I just, I never give them much thought. But I thought... I'll probably just end up having that general mantra, general idea of, look, I'm going to get healthier and lose weight. I'm going to, you know, read more books, try and be a better husband and father. All of those things that, you know, I have always tried to do. Uh, I think I'll still keep those as my goals, but I think it's mostly because I'm not that original of a person. So if you have any thoughts, any cool things that you're doing for the new year that you think that I could apply to myself, let me know. Shoot me an email, andrew at atelatuhygienist.com. Would love to see what everyone else is doing if they are some of the New Year's resolutions type people. And I know lots of people aren't. So, you know, it's okay if you're not. So as we get into this episode, we have our new friends, Danielle Avila and Laura Betancourt, and they're on to talk to us a little bit about what they do. They share their thoughts and on handling fears and how to embrace the profession by being part of it and having a growth mindset. And I was really happy to have them on the show because I think that this is going to be an introduction for many of you to a couple of hygienists that I feel are probably going to be up and comers in our field. They are so kind. They're genuine. They really seem to be doing things for the right reasons. They absolutely put themselves out there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see them writing or there can be on more podcasts, uh, really just all over the dental hygiene landscape. So if you have time also head over to their website, the link is in the show notes and sign up for that newsletter that I've talked about on the episode. I think that you'll really enjoy that one. Next week will be the much discussed yet never released episode with Teresa Duncan. Uh, I am so sorry. I can't come up with new ways of how sorry that I am for always pushing this one back. I, it's just, I messed up. I miscalculated the holiday schedule and 
change some intros and recordings. And sometimes I record these intros way in advance. And that was kind of my downfall on this one. So I am really sorry, but you will enjoy the episode with her and it'll be on insurances. You're not going to want to miss it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that one next week. And then the last thing that I wanted to share was a recent review that we had in December written by AMKRDH and it was titled Love Rant! Exclamation point. And of course, that's all in caps. So they must really want that title to be known throughout the podcast universe. And they said, love this podcast, especially the rant takeovers. And that was also all in caps. So I'm really glad that you all appreciate these episodes with RDH Rant. They still consistently get higher downloads compared to the other shows. So it really sends a message that people are really loving him. And we'll still keep putting them on as long as you keep loving him. Just let me know. And then also don't forget, they just released their holiday office party episode from last week. So go back and check that one out if you haven't already. Uh, But that is it from me for this week. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy this episode with Laura and Danielle. A tale of two hygienists. Welcome everyone into the interview portion of the podcast. I'm very excited today. You know, we're going to start the New Year's off right, I think. It's up to you two to not screw this up is what I'm saying. <laughs> the, the rate of the hygiene world for this whole entire year rests yes. on this podcast being perfect. So, I mean, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. That was my best intro I think I've ever like done for somebody. I love it. That was good. That was really good. So I absolutely love it. Uh, so Lauren, Danielle, we're going to talk about, um, well, first let's introduce yourselves and then give us who you are, why you're passionate about what you're doing. And then I have a bunch of questions for you after that. Love it. Who wants to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Danielle, you want to go? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Danielle Avila. I am a registered dental hygienist of 14 years now. I have been practicing clinically for the last 14 years. And as of this year, started an entrepreneurship with Laura as Diamond Dental Hygiene Career Coaches. And we are super passionate about helping hygienists reignite their passion for clinical hygiene and also kind of finding out what other passions they might have to drive their why outside of the office. Absolutely. And I am Laura Betancourt, also a registered dental hygienist who's been practicing clinically. So a little fun backstory, Danielle and I went to hygiene school together, graduated in 2008. And um, yeah, I started working clinically, which I thought was my forever office. I was there about 10 years. And then like Danielle said, this beginning of the year, we put our heads together and said, let's go on this journey of entrepreneurship. And we created Diamond Dental. And here we are. How scary was that? To be like, look, we got it. We have to do something. We're jumping in. It was terrifying. (laughs) (laughs) terrifying but you have to lean into those fears yeah absolutely we're gonna talk about fears in a little bit but i do want to maybe ask like what was the first step that you all took in starting because there's so many places that you guys could go into to get exposure to do your business plan to do whatever what was the, the first steps that you did to get organized I think one of the first steps is we just started putting our heads together. A lot of hygienists were coming to us asking for guidance and uh, growth mindset. And we said, okay, let's do this. We came up with a name. We fell in love with that. And we said, hey, how do we get our partnership? (laughs) And we just did it. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny. I feel like there wasn't much fear in that getting started. I think the fear kind of came later when it was like, okay, now what are we doing? But the, the <laughs> yes. first part, like the getting started part was really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that most hygienists, because people were coming up to you asking for these things, but do you feel like most hygienists are in a, like a growth mindset? No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like most hygienists have been told that there is no growth in hygiene. To be completely mm. honest, I feel like I hear that a lot. So to be able to have hygienists to come up to us and are looking for growth is really exciting. Maybe let's define what growth means. Yeah. What what type of growth are they looking for? They're looking for other opportunities outside of clinical hygiene and also ways to reignite their passion within their career. So kind of like what new innovations and new technologies are out there that they can bring into their office and kind of, you know, get everybody excited again about being a hygienist and, you know, guiding and helping their patients. 
Do you feel like some hygienists are just sitting here like, you know, we need to grow. Like we know we do, but they have like no energy and no drive to do that. I mean, it exists. Absolutely. Yeah. But, and, and I think a lot of hygienists have that scarcity mindset where they just, you know, want and expect everything to be given to them. And they need to break away from that and realize if you want it yourself and you put the time and energy into doing that, amazing things can happen. So going back to that, uh, the scarcity mindset, you know, I think we have been kind of, I don't want to say brainwashed, but we have been told like, hey, this, we're going to give you all of the things that you need to do your job. You just, you end up being robots. Just do the job. That's all we want you to do is just do the job. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. But that's not really, that's not really fulfilling for a lot of us. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's fulfilling for like probably the first five years. And then you're like, okay, wait a minute. There has to be more. And then that's when that like itch starts to come and you're like, there has to be like room to grow within this career. How do I, how do I grow? How do I, Mm -hmm. how do I, yeah. How do I find or reignite that passion? I feel like a lot of the people that I've run into, they, they know that they need to do something, right? I think it's like, yes. And it's not so much that they don't know where to go to get the thing, but I also feel like they don't have like any one little stumbling block, they get demotivated. So what would be your advice be for someone who, wants to do the thing, they have the energy, they have the drive, but then they've hit stumbling block after stumbling block. And now they're just demotivated. Don't give up. You just have to keep honestly have an accountability buddy, have (laughs) (laughs) have someone that constantly pushes you. And honestly, you need to remember your why. Why are you doing what you're passionate about? Right? We need to continue to write, write, write to yourself every day if that helps. Mm-hmm. What is your reason you're doing what you're doing? And when those really dark days happen, because they will happen, tell yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Did you all know your? This is a really dumb question, but I let me preface this by saying I didn't know my why until after I was already doing a lot of the things. <laughs> Did you? I, I don't know why. I just like. I feel like we just do the things. And then someone said, Hey, why are you doing what you're doing? I'm like, Hmm, great question. So <laughs> did you all like just sit down and like, let me write my why. And like you have, I was like your brainstorming session. And then you went into it. Um, for me personally, I think it was years of just who I am. Right. Like I, I want to help people. I want to help people see the best versions of themselves. Mm-hmm. So that like mentorship and coaching thing always kind of came naturally for me. And then when Danielle and I started collectively talking, well, how do we do this? You know, career coaching doesn't really necessarily exist in hygiene, at least to our knowledge, when we started doing this, we were like, oh, let's, you know, and so that kind of just naturally fell into place. Might be a little different for Danielle. What do you think, Danielle? Yeah, no, I think that we had our why before we started. I think that we like cultivated that and that was pretty similar for both of us. So I think that's what made it or makes it really easy to work together and work so well together because we both have similar whys. And Mm -hmm. when we do have our doc days, we kind of remind each other like why we're doing this and everybody's going to have those days or the people that tell you, no, you can't do that, but you have to just keep moving forward and kind of working through those roadblocks the best you can. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to have those dark days though. Yeah. Of course it is. We're human. Those those are the biggest growth days, honestly, in my opinion. When when you're really screwing up all the time and you're like, I cannot (laughs) dig myself out of this hole to save my life. And it's like, Oh, now I'm out of this hole. How did I get out of this hole? But also look how high I came up. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We need to celebrate our failures. We both went to RDH Evolution this past year. And one of my favorite things Josie said is celebrate your failures because those are your biggest wins. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, she's she's just like a, a quotable human being. Like she she's really just is. like anything she says, I just I can steal that quote easy. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, can we move into fears a little bit? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I, I was surprised that you guys want to talk about fear. And I, I'm like, so I just I have one question about this. Why are we talking about fear? <laughs> because everybody has, it fears fear and fear is mm-hmm. always around us. And fear is what's going to stop us from 
pushing, like really leaning into what it is that we want to do and, and following our dreams. Fear wants us to be little and stay small and stay in our comfort zone. But it's really mm-hmm. learning how to deal with the fear and the anxiety of, you know, your feeling that push and change the trajectory of your life. So really being able to, for me anyway, why am I fearful? What am I fearful of when I'm having those feelings? And being able to like mm-hmm. sit with them a little bit and really reason with it and then move on from it. So not letting it stop me, but trying to figure out why I'm having those feelings and kind of playing with it a little bit and then working through those to get over those hurdles. Absolutely. You need to recognize your fears and and like Danielle said, sit with it so you can because the fear doesn't necessarily go away, right? It's still going to be there, but it's learning how to handle it and then grow from it and lean into it because that's when you'll get the biggest amount of growth. Are there particular types of fear or sets of fear that were, that you guys are encountering a lot with your clients and with people that you've coached and mentored? Yeah, I feel like there's always going to be fear, like fear of like, what if this doesn't work? Fear of what if I invest all this money and it doesn't work or fear of fear of change. I feel like fear of change is probably one of the biggest ones, the um, biggest ones Mm -hmm. that we deal with and trying to help our clients work through those. It's been pretty fun, though, and like having those aha moments and they're like, wow, I actually can do that. I I am smart enough. I am strong enough. Like I am capable. So those have been really fun. I would love to, and I don't know, maybe you guys do know this, but I would love to investigate that a little bit deeper and be like, why does the world fear change all the time? Like, why is that our like a number one time. default? Yeah. Like, Hey, don't, don't mess with my, my rhythm, my flow. Like I don't want to get better. I just want to be this. And that's all I want. Yeah. Why are we like be- that? Because we've been, <laughs> right. that's a- we've been trained to be that way. Like, that's mm-hmm. just how we the world has made us be, you know, fearful. You should you should fear change. You should fear growth. But yeah, like Laura said, those are the biggest growing and the biggest wins when you actually push through fear. I want to talk about staying involved in the hygiene community. You both do a really good job of this. Uh, it sounds like from your, you know, your history, you're really connected to the hygienists that are in your area. Why? Actually, hold on. Let me actually pivot to this. You guys have a newsletter. Yes. I want to, I want to talk about because... That is a really great way to connect with other hygienists. It is kind of one directional, but they can always reply back. Where do you guys come up with the content for that newsletter? Because it's pretty good stuff. Oh, thank, well, thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> we just from our past experience, from what we're going through, what we've dealt with, you know, obstacles we've helped clients overcome. Mm. Yeah. 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 A lot of it is like, oh, wow, I want to talk about that. Like I'm feeling that today. (laughs) Or you've had somebody come to you and have that, you know, that conversation. You're like, that's something really great to write about because if they're feeling that way, I'm sure there's other people that are feeling like that. Mm -hmm. So what have you, what have you learned about as far as like, you know, marketing and growing your subscriber list? How does that work for you all? That's still a learning process, Uh, but (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're. I mean, honestly, we're still we're still learning and growing too. Yes, <laughs> which is awesome. And you're not yeah. fearful of it. <laughs> no, we're tr- no, we're trying not to be. But yeah, so the marketing part, yeah, it's been fun. Hold on, hold it's on. Been we're gonna skip over that. Hold on, hold on. We're not skipping over it. We're trying not to be. We're trying not to be a fear of these things. Yeah, that no, was good. A lot of the back end <laughs> stuff is really overwhelming. Obviously, it can coming, be overwhelming. Yeah, coming from you know being a hygienist and you know educating and helping patients, and that's kind of what we know. Sales and marketing, that part is mm-hmm. been pretty challenging. I, I am not a salesperson. <laughs> Me neither. Do you find it hard because you're selling yourself at a certain point? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. That absolutely. Yeah. And we were taught not that's, to do that. That's that's per- <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. For me personally, that's definitely my biggest obstacle, right? It's I just want to help people. It's like, okay, well, I don't you just want me to <laughs> help selling you? that? Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are other ways that people should be staying involved in their community in the, in the hygiene community? Like, what, how can they stay connected? Uh, I mean, get involved in your local component go to conferences, put, just put yourself out there, even LinkedIn and start connecting with people. Just start having conversations. Yeah. You know, if you're curious about something, ask. Yeah, absolutely. That's been something I think that has worked really well for us. Just kind of having those conversations with anybody, like any hygienist that's on LinkedIn, 
just kind of even raw messaging, like, and hey, this is who I am. Like, I'd love to hear your story and how long you've been a hygienist and and how your journey's been. And that's just kind of brought us a lot of really good connections. I mean, mm-hmm. truthfully, that's how we connected. Yeah, yeah. That is a, an interesting tactic to take because not, first of all, I, I would wonder how many people actually like follow through and like say, yeah, let's, let's have a chat. <laughs> But two, that means that you have to be open to a lot of conversations with a lot of people that you don't know. Yes. How does that work out? Great. I mean, (laughs) I think so. (laughs) I love learning about people. (laughs) I definitely learned some interesting stuff (laughs) over the the time. But no, it's awesome. Are you both naturally extroverted? No. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely way more extroverted. Yes, for sure. <laughs> no, your, I, your face I, I, I t- tells it all. Like, I love it. <laughs> I talk to I talk to strangers in the grocery store. My husband's like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, we're so do you, you guys know Amanda Hill, right? Yes. I want to yes. tell a really embarrassing story for either her or me, depending on like <laughs> if you're extroverted or introverted, I guess. So we went to the Perry Protect conference in um, St. Louis a few months back. And Amanda and I have known each other for a few years. And, and if you know who she is, she's very extroverted. extroverted. And if you know who I am, you know, I'm very introverted. And so I was like, hey, save me a spot by you. Like, I want to sit, you know, by you. And because uh, I didn't know a lot of other people that were going to be at the conference. And it was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made in my whole entire life. <laughs> she is the type of person that when there's the speakers up on stage, and they're saying, you know, hey, this is such a true fact, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh, yeah, it is. Uh-huh. Uh, and speaking to the That's speaker me. and like the speaker looks at her and I'm like, like elbowing her like, hey, stop it. Like, be quiet. Like, you're you're going to make them lose their train of thought because like they're not used to having feedback like that. And she's like, oh, but I'm just being really positive and encouraging because I want them to do well. And I'm like, I understand that. <laughs> But that is so like, I was more, they, okay. So they also had this, this is gonna be really bad for an audio podcast, but behind me to my left, they had a camera for all of the virtual attendees. And so anytime that someone was speaking from the audience, the camera would pan over to where they were. And I got a text message from my friend, Melissa, who said, Hey, are you sitting next to Amanda? And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like they saw like the back of my head and they see her like yapping or whatever. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, the most mortifying thing knowing that hundreds of people are sitting there looking at the back of my head because of her oh drove God. me crazy. Yeah. You and I That's are very much alike. That, that would be me. I'd be yes. like, Laura, stop it. Come on, please. Honestly, enough attention. And I'm Amanda. Yeah. So you and Amanda can go sit in the front yeah. on the very front. Yes. Then Danielle, you and I will just sit in the back. And That's where Laura pay attention, take copious notes. That's exactly how hygiene school went. Laura sat in the very front row and I sat in the very back row. <laughs> yeah. Was she also yeah. the, the president and the, or the treasurer or whatever? No. No, no but she wanted yeah, to be. <laughs> All right. We have, okay. This is probably gonna be the last question. We're, we're getting, we're getting to that point. I want to talk about investing in yourself early and what does that look like? Yeah, that's a really great question. Go ahead, Bla. Take it away. Yeah, take it away. I think it will look a little different for everybody. Most importantly, like if you're coming out of hygiene school, I think investing and making sure that you're a part of ADHA, going to conferences, absolutely. Um, Investing in courses that you're interested in. Not just, oh, I'm working at this office and they told me I had to take X, Y, and Z. Like go beyond that, Mm -hmm. I think is really important. And if you have a passion that you want to pursue, do it. Just take that first step and invest in it. It, Obviously, that will look different for different people, depending Mm -hmm. on what their passions are. But that would be my recommendation. Yeah. And like, yeah, like you said, said mentioned before, you know, working in an office, if the doctor isn't willing to buy the tools or whatever it may be that you need to have a successful day, whether it be the Cavitron or the new instruments, you know, saddle stool, saddle stool, anything. Sometimes it's hard, but taking the money and investing it back into yourself is, you know, investing in your career and that's a journey. So if you can make that easier for yourself day in and day out, the longevity of your career is just going to, and the, and your mental sanity and the burnout and all of the other things that go along with it. It will just prevent yeah. so much of that. So much. Mm-hmm. 
I know I said that was the last question. It's not going to be actually, because <laughs> you just said so many good things. And I'm just like, oh, let's keep talking. <laughs> so, okay, we're talking now to students and new grads, very, yeah. very specifically this, this little group. I'm trying to think like if there were one or two very specific courses and or topics and or things that weren't covered maybe well enough in hygiene school that we know almost day one, you definitely need to know this stuff if you want to be successful. What would you encourage them to look into for topics, either CE courses or hands-on or whatever? Oh, for me, I mean, this is just personal. Would have been more perio. So in hygiene school, I mean, oh, I don't even know if I should be saying this, but, you know, they kind of like brushed it under the rug and they were like. Wait, but didn't you guys both go to school together? Yeah. Yes. I so, did. I did not have that experience. So you're like, I had all the all of her perio keeping yeah. me and then she didn't have to do any. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah. Very interesting. I'm not sure how that. So that's always been for me, like not my strong suit. So really yeah. investing more. So now into learning, you know, all of the stages and the grading and just being as current and up to date and, you know, making sure that my office has a perio protocol so that we're up to date, we're current, we're making sure that the patients aren't slipping through the cracks like they were at my other office. We didn't have a protocol in place and I wasn't privy to that because I wasn't on top of my perio. Danielle, you and I have such like similar careers. (laughs) So, I mean, I did my, you know, perio patients and stuff. We had like a perio seminar patient that we had to do anyway it doesn't matter so the funny thing is though is i wasn't strong in perio either so we did a lot of restorative in washington state and i kind of went i really leaned into that side of the practice as opposed to doing it was is either a profi like a real profi not like a <laughs> bloody profi a real yes. profi or restorative it seemed seemed to be kind of what i was getting the real perio went to the real hygienists <laughs> that were over there doing like the tradition traditional hygiene all day long it i didn't really connect the dots and this is really embarrassing but i didn't connect the dots until we started this podcast because okay. one i didn't have anyone to like actually hash it out with and be like andrew this is why you're wrong over and over and over again <laughs> and also i wasn't seeing the the patient base that i had at, was kind of like a a higher income kind of more affluent the highly educated dental knowledge and all that kind of stuff too so they just were in a healthier situation i didn't really see a lot of real perio for a really long time early in my career. And so, buddy, man, I, that's a great advice because real perio is a beast to mm-hmm. understand. And it's yeah. not just, it's not about calculus. And and that's what I thought for Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, like you yeah. said, we had very similar. I worked for an office in a very affluent community where there wasn't very much perio. It was very under control. And mm-hmm. so I wasn't really in my face as much as it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. I love oral systemic. I would highly recommend hygienists to f- learn and invest more into oral systemic. I, I think it's a beautiful world how the dental medical integration is happening. Did we talk about Chicago Midwinter already on our last call? No. Uh, briefly. We did? Okay. No, we, we, we mentioned we it. Didn't. Yeah. So if you, and, and also listeners, because this will be on January, if you are interested, Oral Systemic, AOSH has their AOSH, name kind of yeah. concurrently, right? So I registered and it's free. I, I mean, you have to get to Chicago, but <laughs> once you're in Chicago, the registration for the, the AOSH Hot Topics is what it's called, is yeah. free. If you want CE, I think it's like $15 or something really, really inexpensive. And I think lunch is like 30 bucks or 45 or something like that. It's not that expensive either. But that's that oral systemic, all that knowledge. Yeah. One day, like you'll just start, you'll catch the bug. Like you're going to yeah. love it. Oh, it's so amazing. Much. So you should go, by the way, to Chicago. I know we should. We'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk about that after. I'll we convince will. you after this, after this podcast. <laughs> okay. And then uh, kind of a throwaway question. Your favorite instrument? Mm-hmm. Oh, I like, I'm becoming obsessed with the blackjack from American and Eagle Instruments. Uh, yeah. Do you do the XP? Yeah. Yes. Oh, both. I do love that. And I love my posterior sickle. <laughs> yeah. Cool tool. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I, coming out of school, we, since in Washington, we were pretty close to Montana, which is where they make a lot of these things. And so mm-hmm. we had the Montana Jack, right? Yes. Posterior sickle, which is great. And then I was introduced to the Black Jack. And I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, I love both of these, but I do like XP a little bit more since I don't have to sharpen and I hate sharpening. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Who doesn't? Uh, any last. Love that. Any last messages for our audience? Anything that you want to tell them about? 
know you're not alone, that you have an amazing community of people here to support you and don't give up in whatever your dreams are. Yeah. A lot of what Laura said. Absolutely. Yeah. Just keep pushing and never give up. And yeah, there is a huge dental hygiene community out there with a lot of amazing people that want to help. Mm-hmm. And if they wanted to reach out to you, what's the best contact information for you all? They could email us diamonddentalhcc at gmail.com. Fantastic. I'll put follow that in the show us notes. on, yeah, definitely follow us on Instagram, Diamond Dental Coaching. Or on LinkedIn, Facebook. Sounds good. Well, thank you for making the time to be here tonight. Thank you. you. Yeah, this is a tale. A tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one. Bringing the best of dental knowledge. And we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening. And preventing gum disease. We're going to do a lot of learning. And have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. Tale of two hygienists.